Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the difference between strictly dominant and weakly dominant strategies in game theory. Now before I start, I will say I have a previous video which is all about the theory and background to this stuff, so interpreting and solving game theoretic matrices like the ones I'll work with here. I'll link to that video below just in case you need any background to this topic. In that video, I describe a dominant strategy as a strategy that is best for a player regardless of what their opponents do. Now, this is a pretty good introductory definition. It's not very sophisticated though. In even moderately complex accounts of game theory, you will hear dominance being discussed in terms of being weak or strict and of one or more strategies dominating other strategies in different ways. So this video is really about hopefully helping you understand these conversations. So on the one hand, we have strict dominance. Strict dominance is when a strategy always delivers a strictly greater payoff, and this is relative to another strategy. Now, just with the use of the word strictly here, this means that the payoffs of the strategy are always greater and we're not allowing that they're equal to ever. So always strictly greater than are the other strategies that we're comparing it to. On the other hand, non-strict or weak dominance occurs when the strategy delivers a weakly greater payoff relative to another strategy. The definition of weak dominance really comes in two parts. We first have to make sure that the payoff from the strategy is at least as good as compared to the other strategy, so you never get a lower payoff. But we also have to make sure that the strategy does deliver a strictly greater payoff uh, at least once, and again, just relative to another strategy. So that might all be a little bit abstract, but let's have a look at this in practice and let's compare what's happening to player one across the two games that I have on the screen here. So I'll start with the game on the left hand side and we're going to find player one's best responses. So from player one's perspective, if player two plays up, we would be on this column. Player one could play up and get four or down and get six. Because six is bigger than four, player one's best response, player two playing up is to play down. If player two plays down, we're on this column here, player one could play up and get five or down and get seven. Seven is bigger than five, so down is player one's best response to player two playing down. So hopefully you can see here, down is definitely a dominant strategy for player one, because regardless of what player two does, it's player one's best interest to play down, Note that player one here always gets a strictly higher amount though by playing down compared to playing up. So six is, is greater, strictly greater than four, and seven is strictly greater than five. So that matches up with our definition of strict dominance. And this would mean that we can say down is a strictly dominant strategy for player one. Now, if you can't quite see that, one thing we could do is just remove player two's payoffs and then compare what's happening to player one. So sometimes all the numbers can get a little bit confusing. So let's just take away player two's payoffs and you can see that player one can either go up and down still. So we're just comparing the numbers in the rows and you can see that down always gives a strictly higher number than up for player one. So that's what we're looking for here. This comparison, again, just indicates that down is a strictly dominant strategy for player one. Now, player one here only has two possible strategies, up or down. So I've been talking about this in kind of an unqualified manner that, you know, you know down is a strictly dominant strategy for player one. When players have three or more strategies, then the dominance relationship might hold between some strategies and not between others. If we want to talk about it in this way, as describing how different strategies relate to one another, we could say in this case, down strictly dominates up for player one. Equivalently, we might also say that up is strictly dominated by down for player one. So that's the left hand side. Let's check what's happening in the game on the right hand side. Again, I'm just going to think about player one and we can start by considering their best responses. Well, if player two plays up, we're on this column here. Player one could go up and get four or down and get six. Six is bigger than four. So player one's best response to player two playing up is to play down. Now if player two played down, now if player two played down, player one could go up and get five or down and get five. So in this case, player one really has two best responses. They could either go up or down, they would get an equal payoff in either case. So I'm going to indicate both of these strategies as best responses. 
Now in this game, player one still has a dominant strategy to go down. And that's because you know, regardless of, of player two's actions, it is just better for player one to go down. Player one still has these best responses of down for both of the possible strategies of player two. And if they play up, they do risk that player two will also play up, in which case they will end up with the four, which they don't want. So down is definitely still a dominant strategy for player one, and they should not play up. It's not strict dominance though, because if player two played down, player one wouldn't get a strictly better outcome by playing down. Uh, they would just get an equal outcome, that outcome of, of, of getting that five payoff. So comparing what we have here with our definition of weak dominance though, down for player one is at least as good as up. So at no point does down give a smaller payoff relative to up. And it is strictly better in at least one case. So if player two goes up, down is strictly better for player one. They get a six, which is strictly greater than four. So whilst we can't say that there's strict dominance here, we can say that there is, is weak dominance. If we look at the game without the distraction of player two's payoffs, so comparing the rows that indicate the payoffs when player one goes up or down, you can see six is bigger than four, but these fives are equal. And this equality is what makes this a weak, not a strict dominance. If we wanted to talk about dominance in terms of how player one strategies relate to one another, we would say for player one, down weakly dominates up and up is weakly dominated by down. So that's kind of an example of a strict and a weak dominance. It is worth noting that strict dominance actually implies weak dominance. So just turning to the game on the left hand side again, we described down as being strictly dominant for player one, but you can see that down also fulfills the requirement of being weakly dominant. Down is at least as good as up. It's never less than, and it is strictly greater than up in at least one case. In, in fact, all the cases it's strictly greater than. So down is also a weakly dominant strategy in addition to being a strictly dominant strategy for player one. In practice though, it's not really the interesting thing about down for player one in that game. The interesting thing is that it's a strictly dominant relationship. In any case, that's it. I do hope that the video helped you to understand the difference between strict and weak dominance and just introduce you to the way we talk about dominance uh, in game theory. There are more interesting and complicated cases, especially where one or both of the players have more than two strategies. Hopefully I can get another video out soon where I go through some of these uh, different types of games and I'll isolate weakly dominant, strictly dominant, etc., and compare them and give you more examples of the language used around this stuff. So I'll link to that video below in the description when it's ready, or you can check out my channel. I'll make a playlist on game theory. I think I've got a few videos on game theory now, so might as well make a playlist. Thank you so much for watching though. Thank you so much to my subscribers as well and for uh, liking and commenting. I do hope that the video helped. Thank you so much again. Have, have a great day or night.